for the buyout purposes. I would say uh, there's a high degree of probability that they try and find a suitor. Like, I wonder if a team like Arizona, again, not a dumping ground for contracts anymore, but is looking to get better maybe for a team that's taken a few players off of waivers the last few years, this is kind of the essentially the same idea is let's get someone that I still look at Yamamoto and say, this is someone that when healthy has 20 goal potential in this league scored 10 and 58 this year. And a lot of things went wrong. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm, I'm not as down on the player as a lot of other people are, especially in the marketplace because I think the real truth of what happens in the NHL is that no one wants to give anyone a get out of jail free card. Like no one wants to help the Oilers do their business. And so, you know, I think that's kind of where the Oilers stand is Ken Holland. I'm told doubled back over the weekend and was making some calls uh, to try and move Yamamoto. So safe to say that's the first move we can expect from the Oilers. Or do you think they're sniffing around some other areas? I think they are. I think they're, nibbling on the edges is what i would call it i think they're kicking tires to understand what the marketplace looks like to improve at some of the positions that we talked about and we've talked about kind of the whole off season right wing fourth line center fourth line center maybe third line center depending on how things shake out with mcleod i think they want to keep him and like him but if there's an opportunity to upgrade he might be one of those guys that ends up being on the move um certainly wouldn't say it's likely or put him on my trade targets board but i think it's a greater than zero chance and yeah i think you know maybe adding a little bit of a different profile on the back end too just a different stylistic fit if that makes sense yeah the one thing about the back end that's interesting is having more conversations here the last 48 hours is the organization agrees broberg has to play but the problem is there's nurse at home and kulak so if he's playing in the organization, it's likely in the American league next season, which is fine, but I'm, I'm not sure that's ideal. So I, I wonder, cause his cap, it doesn't help you clear any cap space. So no. if, is there a bigger deal where he becomes a focal point from a team who thinks, Hey, this is a guy that can become something. You'd obviously have to move Yamamoto and others in a package deal, but the, the Broberg one, well, I don't think they're like actively, you know, looking to trade him. I think they're probably he's not untouchable. Open. Oh, he's not untouchable. Not. No, no, definitely not. What no. kind of value would he have around the league? It's not. That's the problem is it's not really that high because you don't know what he is. Yeah. People don't. And they need to see more. The problem is. So like the good thing is Broberg needs to play. And the bad thing is Broberg needs to play. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Like it's a chicken and the egg kind of thing. And the Oilers don't, they're not really in the, uh, the bleep around and find out category, if that makes sense. You mm-hmm. can't afford to throw him a, no. a 40, 50 game run at this opportunity to have it kind of bite you in the ass and go the other direction. So that's one of the things the Oilers have to weigh is as much as we might like the idea of Broberg, the execution of Broberg chewing off more minutes for us leaves them a little bit vulnerable, I think. I know, it's fair.